Yo, what's up, bootstrappers? This is Ryan Nickel coming at you with another coaching tip number seven zero. All right, I'll roll my window down here, get a little bit of wind action. I'm just getting back from the chiropractor, having him adjust my back because I'm sleeping on a couch. I'm trying to sit up, sleeping like coughing all over the place, man. It's nasty. Haven't gotten good sleep at all. But all right. So I got this dude. I've I've been playing with this guy for at least two, about two years. What's going on, Steven? And this guy's house is, uh, he's been on code enforcement's list. He's been on pre-foreclosures list. He's been on, um, he has not been on a, on, on a, a hoarder's list. But if you have my book, Defending Yourself Against a Foreclosure, if you have my book, he's on there. I have a picture of his house, his kitchen, where it's just like garbage everywhere. What's up, Eric? Anyway... This guy, we have done, I have done so much to help this guy. I mean, we've become friends. Don't get me wrong now. We've become friends. I've had him over for for Thanksgiving. Uh, We've had him over for Christmas, dinners. I mean, he has nobody, no kids, no wife, never got married, and he's just old and lonely. Him and his talk radio is all he has, because that's all he listens to is talk radio and curses at the world and the politics that are happening. He's always asking me, did you see what they said today? Did you hear that? And I'm like, no, dude, I don't even care. What's going on, Eric? So anyway, crazy, crazy thing. So we ended up buying a condo to rehab for this guy, to move him in, because we wanted to buy his house. We wanted to buy his house and remodel it. Road closed the head, what the? I'll see about road closed the head. I got a big ass car. Just kidding. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm in no shape for a backhoe. So the dude, we bought, so his, his house is like, it's been like all messed up, like all over the place. And it needs at least, at least, I kid you not, at least $100,000 between cleanup and repairs. This house, he's an avid chain smoker. He's been living there since 1992. The walls are yellow. They're bleeding tar. And he has no, there's like a little pathway in his room from like the room to the bedroom to the kitchen. And that's all it is. Like he has like nowhere to go. And that's just how it goes with his place. So I am $100,000. He owes like 40 something thousand on his mortgage. So we found him this house. We're like, okay, totally cool. We're going to buy this guy a condo and he's going to, we're going to, we're going to fix it up and live in it. I took him to the condo and he's like, "Ah, I can't do this. It's crazy. So we took him to the condo. That was before like, it was like all nasty. Now it's all fixed up and nice. And this condo is like on point. Like we thought for sure we're going to sell this condo for like maybe $55,000. We're getting closer to 80 now. Because one, the market's gone up, and two, um, you don't find anything under 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 this price, under you know, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a two bedroom, eight hundred square foot home. It's like nice, and he, it, I mean, we got granite and everything. So anyway, we offered to give it to this guy. We would give him this condo, uh, not give it to him, but I mean, he would pay for it. But we would pay him; he'd have money left over. He had all this stuff. And his comment was, "He's like, you're, you're trying to kill me. I can't do this. You're trying to kill me. If I did this." I would want to kill myself. I'm so claustrophobic. I'm like, claustrophobic, dude? Do you know what you live in right now? He goes, I go, go, you have more livable space in this two-bedroom condo than you do in your three-bedroom house that is covered with garbage. And that's a true statement. I mean, like, seriously, like, there's, like, more livable space. So, yeah, Eric, $80,000. You should see it. It is nice. Randy has done a great job to that condo. So, anyway, all of this stuff, we're going back and forth. And we're in for he's in foreclosure on this property. So he recently just brought it out of foreclosure. He's sick. He's really, 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 really sick. What's up, Rusty? I mean, he's he's dying. He has no health insurance benefits. He's been self-employed his entire life, and part of that reason is or part of the because of that he never paid in the social security, so he hasn't gotten any kind of social security benefits. And I'm telling the guy, I'm like, dude, you're like, you need to go to social security and get some 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 benefits. So I took him. I've done this. I've helped him actually get on welfare. He was, this poor guy makes, <coughs> excuse me, makes $225 a quarter. A quarter. It's less than $100 a month, guys. He makes $225 a quarter. And he he was just like living off of like, if you, if you see the pictures, you see just there's cartons of like yogurt. He lives off yogurt and like a glass of milk and like a, a yogurt a day just to get like some kind of protein and, and stuff like that in his body. 
but it's such a sad, sad existence. And so I took him to welfare, got him some food stamps. He's now living a lot better. He discovered ice cream, Dryer's ice cream. He loves mint chocolate chip ice cream of all things, man. But he doesn't have a freezer. So what he does is he goes and he buys his little, like, small little pint things and sits in the car and eats it because it's melting. And so every time he goes to the store, which is not like once a week, he buys one of those things. So he's starting to get a gut, which is good, man. The guy had no fat on him. He was like a bag of bones. So, um, but he's discovered Dryer's ice cream, man. Uh, and we told him, like, look, man, we'll give you a brand new fridge. You can buy all the dryers you want, put it in there, and eat it whenever you want, and you can have it in the fridge. So anyway, he's like, no, I don't want this house, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, this is going, this is, this is getting crazy. So I was supposed to take him to Social Security yesterday to get, because Social Security the first time said we can't help him. <coughs> he has too many assets. And in savings account, he had about $4,500. And for Social Security to even consider you, you have to have less than $2,000 in the bank. So obviously he had more than that. What's up, Nathan? So because he didn't have the, the required, you know, he was above the, the threshold, they, like, they kicked him out. So he was in pre-foreclosure. He was about $3,000 in the hole on a house that's all fixed up could be worth roughly about 300000 but it needs some serious work. I mean, he has a pool in the backyard. It's a nice pool. It's one of the biggest pools I've seen in the area, like a big, big pool. He has a huge double lot, so it's like perfect, perfect size for it. His pool has um, has a big old fat palm tree growing through the middle of it, man. <laughs> it's like this palm tree, like this huge, like trunk is probably about as big as me, and it's like growing right through the middle of it. I mean, that's how bad <laughs> this place is. Um, and he has like nine cars buried in the jungle in the backyard. Like there's like just all kinds of just stuff all over it. So um, that's right, man. Eric, that's how we do it, man. You got to take care of these people. And so um, what happened was. Yesterday he couldn't. He did. He just. He fell asleep. He didn't. He couldn't make it. He's like, I couldn't go, man. I'm so sorry. I feel bad for standing you up. Apparently his leg is swollen so big. Like, and it's. I'm sure it's stress induced. And it's, he has. He keeps on bumping it on on a board in his house, and he can't move the board because it's covered in like tons and tons and tons and tons of like garbage, most like VHS tapes from like Leave It to Beaver. Believe it or not, that's what he has. Like he like loves beavers. And the cleaver, Mr. Cleaver, Joan Cleaver. So, um, and he keeps on busting it. Yeah, dude, straight up like huge palm tree like I could swing on a branch on it and like make it to the other side I'd be like Ooh, Tarzan across that thing so um cause he's under the $2,000 mark now and he's like I got it you know he's like scared cause he's been cashing out his his uh his, what's up I, Ian his his stocks checks to to, to fund his, his his living expenses man Mildred it is a sad story it is such a sad sad story um so he's just like, I don't want to live in this house. He's like, I would rather just die in my house. And I'm like, you know what? You probably are going to die in your house. And he's like, but that's all I want to do. I'm like, you know what? I can help you with this then, all right? So we were chatting yesterday. And he's like, I, I, I just, I just, it's going to kill me to move. And now if you don't know anything about hoarders, this is why I brought this up. Brought this up. So hoarders is, is a, it's a subset of OCD, of, uh, of obs obsessive compulsive disorder. And when someone has this, this disorder, it's, it's, it's based on these fears, these thoughts of fears. Like when someone has OCD, <coughs> they avoid certain behaviors not to be triggered. For example, if they're driving and, and, they're, and they're driving and they're like going around a sharp turn and like, what if I just like floored it and like went straight through that, that barrier and like just killed myself? I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I don't want to kill myself. What am I doing? I'm not, I'm not suicidal. This is it. You know, they, they pull over the car and they throw their keys out the window. Like, I'm, that's it. I'm not driving ever again. They, like, avoid these things because they don't know how to deal with those thoughts that are just normal, random thoughts. That doesn't mean anything at all. So when someone is a, is a hoarder, they, they acquire all of this stuff that they, they, they either do it one of two ways. One, I'm kind of a hoarder, man. Comes, when it comes to property, I'm a property hoarder, man. I'm looking for the best deal out there. So I grew up um, going to garage sales. <coughs> <coughs> And the idea was, you know, the thrill of the hunt, the seek, what can we find? You know, we each got five bucks, and whenever, when that five bucks was gone, it was gone. And so, like, how can I make this five bucks last? And what's, who, got, who scored the, the best treasure with their five bucks? Who got the most amount of, you know, um, treasures with their, with their money? And so that was the whole idea was, like, you know, how can I, how can I do this? Like, I'm going to uh, obsess, like, about, you know, getting as much as I possibly can. That's one thing, you know, a hoarder. So, like, you know, every weekend they're going to garage sales and they're buying stuff they, did, they don't need. Or they're going to the dollar store just because of this thrill of the deal, the seek of, you know, they're just trying to seek it out. Yeah, you know, Rusty. You know, man. You met my mom. Funny story is Rusty's out shopping in, in a thrift store in Visalia where I grew up. And and uh, and my mom is shopping there. And they don't know each other. My mom's like, oh, hey, what are you doing? I'm buying this stuff. My mom like talks to everybody. And so does Rusty's wife. 
And Rosie's wife was like, oh, we're doing this. We know we're in real estate. And she's like, oh, my son's in real estate. He's in Yuba City. And she's like, Yuba City? And this is like Rusty and Gwen are coaching with me. She's like, it wouldn't have to be Ryan, would it? And sure enough, man, they're like, oh my gosh. So then my mom like followed them like a, like a lost puppy dog around the store for like three hours trying to talk to them. <laughs> I mean, I love my mom. She's great and all, but she's always like out there finding like the deal of the century. So, and then she told me, she's like, I want to do what they do. I want to buy houses too. I'm like, mom, you're so good at this. You got like a nose for it, man. Cause she'll like, she'll tell herself, she'll wake up. She's like, I'm going to go find some gold today. And she'll go into the jewelry store or to the uh, <coughs> Salvation Army or Goodwill. And she looks at the costume jewelry and sure enough, she finds like gold bracelets. Like she's found like, you know, thousand dollar gold, gold watches and stuff like that. Just cause someone doesn't know what they are and just marks them as costume jewelry. So my mom has like that gift. And I've been telling her like, mom, get in the, get in the real estate. You can do this. So anyway, I, di I, I digress a little bit. Um, so in, in, in chatting with, um, so that's, you know, back to OCD. I am so sick. You don't even know, guys. I am so sick. <coughs> I got it from Santa Cruz. And it was like, ugh. So, um, what's up, Randy? So that's one part of OCD. The other part or, or, of hoarding, the other part is, is that there's emotional memories that they cannot let go. That they have to hold on to every bit of garbage, every bit of trash, because if they do, they, they don't know how to process these things. Now, and I, I this is what this guy is. He's not out there shopping. He has no money, man. You know, $285 a quarter. I'm like, come on. Who has money like that to go shopping at a, at a garage sale? When you're like, when... This is how bad it got, guys. Over there was one point for a six six month period of, of a six month window, we didn't he didn't have any money, and 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 they turned off his water. And he doesn't have any hot water or anything like that. He has a little like gas heater. He puts a little nozzle on and walks around the house with his heater. I mean that's bad. He's breathing in all that fume and stuff like that. But he didn't have hot water. And what he did was he went to the gas station, filled up a five gallon bucket, and uh, tried to boil it on a burner and like gave himself like a little bath like once every like three or four you know days. That's how bad it was. And so, but his situation is, what's up, Walter? He's the only, he, he's not the only child, but he, he was like kind of like alienated and outcast. He's ostracized. Parents didn't love him. Never got married, never had any kids. Well, I take that back. He had one kid, but the kid was like, screw you, dad. I want your money. So she like seriously like pillaged him, took 50 grand from him, wrote, wrote herself a bunch of checks, and then bailed. This is about, about 18 years ago. Sad situation. And, um, and she called him about five years ago. Hey, Dad, when, I just want to see if you're still alive or not. Looking for, like, inheritance. Like, horrible situation. So he doesn't know how to process his emotions is, is what it comes down to, which he cannot get stuff. So if, if I were to go in there, like, this was, like, the thought process. Like, we put him in the condo, give him a suitcase, go, good, you're on your own. And, like, if I were to have done that, like, after talking to, like, this psychologist about what, what happens with people with, like, with severe hoarding issues, he would, have, he, would have, he would have become extremely suicidal. Because he already has those thoughts. People are, and he's told us several times, like, I would commit suicide if I lived in this place. He would, he would, he would either take his life or he would have a, a psychosis. He'd have a breakdown. He'd have a nervous breakdown because he doesn't know how to handle this stuff. We would, we would actually, and I would be the tipping point. I would be the, the breaking point for this guy. And I don't want that. And I, and I realized that the more I was pushing him, the more that it would have been that I would have broke this guy. I would have completely broken him. And, and, and I don't want that on my conscience, man. I don't want him to like, I mean, I, in my mind, I think I'm doing a good thing, like this intervention, but at the same time, I'm like, it's not what he wants and it's not what's gonna, gonna serve him. Because if he wants to die in his house, let him die in his house. He's happy that way and, and that's just what it is. Maybe I can make it a little bit better for him, like clean it up a little bit, do something, you know, but, but the forced fact that I was gonna take him out of his environment and throw him into a new place and just garbage, trash, just trash everything, would have just absolutely killed him. And he kept on saying that to us. And I didn't quite realize it until I talked to my friend. I'm like, hey, what's going on here? <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, in talking back to, to him, I said, look, it, he's like, look, I just want to die here. I just want to stay here. I go, great, you know what? We can make this happen. And the house will either end up going back to the bank because you can't make the payments or it'll go to the tax sale because you're behind on your taxes. But when you die, the state's going to get it. He's like, well, I don't want the state to get anything. I'm like, great. The only thing you can, you can really do is to put this house in a trust. Put this house in a trust. And then that way, when you die, it doesn't go to the state. It goes to whoever your, your successor beneficiary is. He's like, you'll be the beneficiary of the trust. You'll be the trustee of the trust. But you also need to have a successor beneficiary. And I knew where I was going with this. He's like, well, I'd want you, Ryan, to do that. You've helped me so much here. I'm like, oh, I'd be honored, Stephen. Oh, just told you his name. <laughs> so, um, but I knew exactly where I was, I was taking this conversation with the guy. He's like, yeah. He's like, but I don't know anything about trust. I'm like, well, lucky for you, I do. 
I'll go ahead and draft it up. I'll make you the beneficiary and the trustee, and then I'll make myself the successor beneficiary. And I'll make it so that, you know, you live in this house. And if we need to catch up those taxes, that's fine. It's like, now I have a vested interest. Now I'm going to make sure these taxes don't, we're not going to go to a tax that we're not going to get behind on our mortgage again. I already have a financial, um, I already have a power of attorney from him financially. I have his financial power. Every deal or possible deal. <coughs> Um, I don't know quite what that means, Randy. So I'm drafting up a, a land um, a land trust here. I'm going to put myself as a successor beneficiary. Like I said, I already have a financial power of attorney for this gentleman. So if at any time I need to step in to save this property, which now would be in my best interest because I have, when he passes, whenever that may be, it may be in a, in a, in a year from now, it might be like 15 years from now. Okay, that's probably not true. This guy is really bad off. But, I mean, he may still have a couple more years left. So, um... But that's that's how you handle the situation. This we got to understand what, what what's really going on behind the scenes. You know, there's a good reason for people to buy, and then or for, there's a good reason for people to sell, and then there's the real reason for people to sell. And until you discover what that real reason is, you're not really helping anybody. And you know, it, there's no real reason for him to sell. The only thing he's trying to do is avoid losing his property. Um, he is so he's 76 years old. He is so ingrained into his his uh, his psychosis that it, it an intervention like this is not going to to change what's happening in his in his life it would it would break the guy so that's what we're going to end up doing for this man is, is to help him out um, you know not all, all hoarder situations are the same every deal or possible deal in is it learn oh yeah totally Randy oh my gosh you've taught me that more than anybody man there's always something to learn and gain from it every experience of the building block in your in your in your arsenal and your success so with this poor guy that's what we're going to end up doing is just putting it in a land trust. And then when he finally does uh, go the way of all the earth, then um, I'll rehab this property and, and sell it. But um, in the meantime, I just want to make him as comfortable as possible. And that means getting him on some medical because he has no medical, man. This is America for crying out loud. If you can have people crossing the border, no offense, man. Yo hablo espanol también. If you got people crossing the border and they can get free medic Medicare or med medical information, um... Why can't this guy who's been here this entire life, who's dying slowly, and there's nothing that, that supposedly there's nothing that people want to help him with because he's not he's not medicated. I told him, I'm like, dude, go to the hospital for crying out loud. So anyway, um, I've, been, I've been getting blown up here on texts and also on, on uh, voicemails, but I wanted to share this critical piece of information for you because you're all going to run into some, someone someday that is a hoarder, and I want you to understand the critical nature of this piece that you got to find out what kind of hoarder they are. Are they a hoarder because they just love to go and buy and shop and collect stuff, or are they a hoarder because they have some kind of emotional? They have some emotional processing issues that they can't go through. That if you were to force them out of that situation, you would actually end up really hurting them more than you think you're actually helping them by getting them into a better place. Hey, what's up, Ryan? So anyway, but I gotta tell you, man, real estate is one of the best opportunities because this house will be a great deal. Aside from the fact that I'm helping this man, the hospitals can't turn him away. No, they won't, Eric. The problem is, and I talked to him about this. <laughs> is when he went to the ER last time for something, he came away with a bill for like 1800 bucks, And I told him, I said, dude, you're dying. What do you care if you walk home with an $1,800 bill? Well, I mean, seriously, like, your life, like, I'm, I'm not going to go to the hospital. He has like these high ideals and principles, like, I'm not going to be a toll on society. I'm not going to let them bear my burden. It's my responsibility to provide for myself. That's how he talks. You think he'd like be a black preacher or something like that, but... um He's like, he doesn't want that that burden, and I'm like, dude, come on, are you kidding? Like, it was like it was like pulling teeth to get him just to go to welfare to get some food stamps, man. And even then, it's like 95 bucks a month is all he gets. And even like that, he's he's living like a king because before, like, he was living off a carton of like uh, yogurt, man. That's crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. Talk about hospitals. Maybe I need to be going to the hospital, man. I'm like, <laughs> next time you see me, I'll be like in a coffin. All right. Oh no, maybe that's an OCD thought. Maybe I'm suicidal. Maybe I should turn the thing off right now. Throw my, throw my phone off the window. So, um, but I tell you what, guys. You got to find the opportunity to help people. Sometimes you get paid today. Sometimes you get paid in the future. And this is an opportunity where I'm going to get paid in the future. I mean, there's a lot of hand-holding and love that has gone into this guy. I mean, I definitely care for him. I, I, I love this guy. I care. You know, I want him to, to be happy and healthy. And we've had him over, like I said, for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And we'll have him over again. And... Um, He's just a lonely guy that has turned into a good friend. And like I said, 
going to get this one into a land trust. I'll be the successor beneficiary. So when he finally does go, I want to make his life as easy as possible. But when he finally does go, I'll have an opportunity here. So I'm telling you guys, you're just one deal away from changing your entire financial future. If all I had was this one deal, there's a, there's a huge payday on the end of this deal when it's all said and done after the rehab and everything. So you just got to keep that in mind, guys. One deal is all it takes to change your entire financial future. All right, I got to go. Talk to you all later.